Alrighty. So uh, here's for the first lever. And I did a sketch so you can see fulcrum. That just represents where that axle is. And then this side of the lever, that actually was precisely one inch. So I went ahead and called it 1.0 inches. So that can have two significant figures because it was like right on the money. I think those are designed so that every two spaces is exactly an inch. Makes sense. Um, and then this distance here, uh, that this is for that very first trial where it was the first class lever. That was exactly 11 inches. Probably could have done 11.0, but that's okay because two sig figs is my max for this. Um, so then I plugged that into my ideal mechanical advantage formula. That's effort distance divided by resistance distance. And then I did 11 inches divided by 1.0 inches. That's exactly 11. Um, so I put that zero there because now I can make that 11 instead of just 10. Down here. Okay. Part of the problem with measuring force was I wasn't able to be quite as precise as I was with my ruler measuring these distances. So... I actually only ended up having one sig fig for this value here. Um, my resistance force that was 0.22 pounds. That was the that was how heavy my little weight was. And then the effort force when I was lifting it, it was you know stuck on this end, and we lifted it way all the way out here. It only took. 0.02 pounds and that 0.02 that was as precise as we could get that's only the one sig fig so 0.22 divided by 0.2 is actually 11 the same but i wasn't able to be as precise with these values so i'm gonna have to round that to one sig fig that's 10. now you might be thinking oh okay so now i can do uh i can compare the 11 and the 10 well, if one of them has one sig fig and the other one has two sig figs, we're not really comparing apples to apples either. We are going to have to, if I'm going to call that AMA, if I'm going to call that 10, I'm going to have to call my, uh, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm comparing appropriate precision. Um, so really what we're seeing is a perfectly matched uh, amount of uh, mechanical advantage when we talk about the ideal, the distance, versus the actual with the forces. And that makes sense because when we're sitting here holding it and not moving it around, well, would there be any friction? Probably not because it's not moving. This is an example of static equilibrium. So to see them being exactly the same and having an efficiency of close to, if not exactly, 100% makes sense. So one thing that I haven't talked to you guys all about is something called efficiency. That's this next little formula that's down here. Do you see how it says efficiency is equal to AMA divided by IMA? then times 100% because it's a percentage. If we just did it like this, then it would be a decimal. Because uh, basically what I'd have is 10 divided by 10, or if I was using mixed matched numbers of sig figs, that'd be 10 divided by 11. 10 divided by 11 is... zero point nine zero nine zero nine okay so it's 0 0.91 so it's like 91 percent what we really what we've got here is is about a hundred percent so what i would put then for my efficiency i'm gonna when i write it i'm gonna go ahead and just shorten the word efficiency to just the letter e so i'm gonna say e I, my my document camera doesn't connect to my computer so this is fun uh, so E is equal to uh, AMA over IMA, which is, that is, <clears throat> oh, I should actually like finish. Oh, this is silly. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. You guys, thank you for being wonderful people. Um, okay, here I go. So times 100%. Here we go. Okay. Uh, that's equal to. Uh, 10 divided by 10 
times. 100%. Okay, so what's, what's 10 divided by 10? Oh, it's 1. What's 1 times 100? Oh, it's 100. Boop. Goes 100% efficient. That, that makes sense. That makes sense because we're in static equilibrium. We're not losing any energy to friction. So we would expect our machine to be 100% efficient. That's a good thing. Um, let's take a look with some of the, uh, well, back up, sorry. My goal for you, uh, for, for testing your machines, I'd like to see you guys test at least your levers uh, by the end of class on Tuesday next week, okay? So that's gonna be the 13th. I think you guys should be able to test your levers with this mechanism in class on Tuesday. That's my goal. I'm gonna have you guys update me on how that is going uh, when you're in class next week. Thank you.